Jefferson is succeeded by one of his own. The president who follows him is his secretary of state, his friend, his associate, really his right-hand man for over 20 years. Number four, James Madison, Democratic Republican, 1809 to 1817, age 57, from Virginia. He was eminently qualified for the job. A veteran of the Revolution, author of the Constitution, a Jeffersonian Democrat, and a Virginian. There are people who feel that he had a much, in some ways, a better mind than Jefferson, certainly a more disciplined mind than Jefferson. In truth, James Madison was everything Thomas Jefferson wasn't. He was sort of the opposite of Jefferson physically. He was short, while Jefferson was tall. He was funnier than Jefferson. He was known as having a body sense of humor. He had light hair, turned gray, blue eyes, was soft-spoken, and not given to rage or small talk. He usually dressed in black. Madison brought something else to the White House that had been missing during Jefferson's presidency, a first lady. Dolly Madison is enormously important in the shaping of protocol. She is a younger, vivacious woman who sparkles, sort of brightens up what is considered Madison's drab exterior. He becomes a much more interesting, exciting figure because of her. The Madisons became known for lavish parties and sumptuous feasts at the White House. These often included ice cream, a delicacy of the day. Dolly's favorite flavor was oyster. As an executive, Madison had an abiding sense of fairness, a calm demeanor, and was always well prepared. This was not only a very smart man, this was a man who did his homework, who did his thinking, who did his studying, and was really prepared for whatever came up. Except for a war the War of 1812, which ultimately defined his presidency. Madison comes into office with an enormous problem on his hands. Half the country's still pushing to go to war with England, half the country's pushing to go to war with France, and Madison is really pushed by events into the war with England. The War of 1812 was sparked on the high seas. Shortly after Madison's inauguration, the British began seizing American ships and impressing U.S. sailors and merchant seamen. Diplomatic efforts to solve the crisis went nowhere. Finally, on June 18, 1812, James Madison became the first president in U.S. history to ask Congress for a declaration of war. Imagine what chutzpah it took. We declared war on Great Britain. They did not declare war on us. Our Navy in 1812 numbered about 20 ships. Theirs numbered about 1,000. Their army was battling Napoleon and was triumphant. We had barely a militia. It was a foolish thing to do. It is a disaster. We lose uh, humiliating engagements in Detroit and in upstate New York, and the war begins very badly indeed. Madison's troubles grew as the war progressed especially in New England. There was almost a civil war in 1814 because New England threatens to secede. I mean, New England is so angry, their lifeblood is commerce and shipping. Then in August 1814, the British raided Washington and burned the president's mansion. Driven from his home, James Madison became the first and only sitting president to face enemy fire. He personally took command of a militia battery outside Washington, but to his embarrassment, the commander-in-chief was forced to retreat. Much as we hate to disappoint the American public who believes America has never lost a war, we definitely lost this war. Our capital was burned, we're defeated on land, on sea. And poor Madison is burdened with this image that he got us into the war. Desperate to end it, Madison sent James Monroe to negotiate peace with England. In December 1814, Monroe succeeded with the Treaty of Ghent, officially ending the war. 
Then, before news of the treaty reached Washington, America was strangely rewarded with a belated victory at the Battle of New Orleans. The man who benefited most was the defender of New Orleans, General Andrew Jackson. But the victory did little for James Madison. Two important things come out of this war. Dolly Madison saves the portrait of George Washington and the Star Spangled Banner. But it does tarnish Madison. It's about the only thing he's really remembered for. The War of 1812 brought the American presidency into the politics of international diplomacy and the real world. Foreign issues could no longer be ignored. This is a rude awakening about world politics that Madison gets with the War of 1812. It's a time of the opening up of the presidency, the part of the America becoming much more mature. And the president has to play a role in this because he is the symbol of the United States. As with those who came before him and those who would follow, James Madison learned a harsh lesson about the office he helped create. It is not so much about the man, but the unforeseen events which define a presidency. Before the War of 1812, James Madison proposed that the United States, instead of building new ships, should simply rent Portugal's navy. It didn't happen.